This podcast is brought to you in partnership with Speak Studios and Speak Boise. Speak Boise is a community-driven studio space where voices from all walks of life can speak and be heard. You can find them on Instagram and Facebook at Speak Studios, Speak Boise, and at their website, speakstudios.com. Speak Studios. Speak and be heard. This podcast is also brought to you by Instant Imprints. Promote better with Instant Imprints. Instant Imprints are Boise's visual communications experts and your place for everything you need to promote your business, club, school, or group. As a locally owned business, Instant Imprints specializes in making your organization more visible with custom branded apparel, embroidery, promotional items, print services, and wide format printing for signs, as well as banners and vehicle graphics. Want better ways to get noticed? You better visit Instant Imprints at instantimprints.com slash Boise or call 208-IMPRINT. That is 208-467-7468. Welcome back to the Alcohol Tipping Point Podcast. This is episode four. And I am your host, Debbie Maisner. And it occurred to me that I have not properly introduced myself or the alcohol tipping point and what this is all about. So our great producer here at Speak Boise, Ryan Seekert, has agreed to interview me. Thanks, Ryan. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's an honor to be on this podcast. So I just I just want to thank you for having me. Thanks for coming. I, w- I told Ryan I, I would have just done it in like a, a British interview voice if I didn't have him to interview me. <laughs> and I was like, I think that would have been pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> we'll do that next time. Okay, maybe. next time. Yeah. I'm going to bring it out. I, I do like to speak in accents occasionally. Do you want to give us a little uh, sample of your British accent real quick? Uh, hello. Good morning. What, uh, what did you have for breakfast today, Ryan? Uh, I actually skipped my breakfast, British Debbie. Um, I didn't. I didn't have time to eat. I. Uh, I skipped my alarm. I, I put snooze on all three of my alarms that went off. Woke up at eight thirty, and I was like, "Oh shoot! I have to be at the studio in like at least fifteen minutes." Threw on deodorant. Threw on a hat. Got dressed. The the coffee lines were too long. Um, as I was going down Broadway, I was like, "Well, this is gonna be." Uh, Slower morning than normal, but we'll, oh, we'll get through it. Ryan, you poor dear, dear, dear. <laughs> well, well, let's hope this puts some some jump in your step, some pep. <laughs> pep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think this should. I'm, I'm excited. Okay. This is my coffee right here. Okay. Okay. Let's go. First question. Debbie, why did you start the Alcohol Tipping Point podcast? Well, the podcast I start, well, I should go back. I've started the Alcohol Tipping Point, which is actually a website company. Well, newsflash, it's an LLC. Now it's officially a company. Ooh. Yeah. Um, I'm big time now. But um, I started it last year during uh, the pandemic. I got, I didn't get furloughed, fortunately, but my hours did get reduced. And so last year for me was a a big year of just finally getting my drinking under control, being totally sober. um, And I decided, wow, I, I can help other people. I want to help other people. So I created the website. I I learned how to build a website, the behind the scenes thing, because I wanted to have resources available for people that I had a hard time finding. So it has like a list of Quitlet books. It has a list of podcasts. It has, um, I have a blog and it has different articles in it. Um, Just kind of a variety of resources and inspiration for people to help them with their struggle with drinking. So that's why I started Alcohol Tipping Point. And then this podcast came about. I wasn't looking for a podcast. It found me <laughs> because I saw, I think it might have even been an ad on Instagram or something for Speak Boise. 
um, which is just this great company that you guys have here where you can just plug, plug and play um, and do your own podcast and get your message out even more. So I decided to give it a try because because that's kind of been my theme for 2021. Like I'm going to try new things. I'm going to put myself out there. Um, good, so good. That's awesome. Yeah. Good for you. Okay. Next question. You ready? Yes. Why did you name it the alcohol tipping point? Well, I named it alcohol tipping point because, well, first of all, I, I was going to name my business flying pigs. <laughs> wow. <laughs> like, because I, it was about making the impossible possible. So I thought, oh, flying pigs, like that, what does that symbolize? Like when pigs fly, that's an expression that people mm -hmm. say like, oh yeah, well, that'll happen when pigs fly. Yeah. But I felt like for me, like pigs are flying. Like I quit drinking. Pigs are flying. I made the impossible possible. Huh, okay. Um, but I got told maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> People will probably think different things. <laughs> they don't know what that means. But I thought it would be like a cute little mascot. Um, anyway, but I, even before quarantine, when people got into puzzles, I was very into puzzles and listening to podcasts or audiobooks. And I got really into Malcolm Gladwell. And he has a book called The Tipping Point, um, okay. which is the first I had really heard about The Tipping Point, which is just kind of... Um, a term used when something leads to a big change. So it could be like something small that leads to a big change. And that could be socially um, and it can be scientifically. So like ice, for example, it gets to a certain degree and it starts to melt. And that's the tipping point for ice. Ooh. Yeah. And then, you know, like the... Me Too movement is another like societal example of a tipping point where women just got to a point where they it, were not going to put up with sexual harassment anymore. And so that was the tipping point for the Me Too movement. And, and so for me, with alcohol use, I had reached the tipping point where it was causing me more pain than pleasure. Um, and I was ready to give it up and be done. Hmm. Okay. Now, why did you decide to stop drinking and how? Well, I, I initially, what I wanted to do was moderate. I just wanted to be cut back a little. Yeah. I yeah. wanted to be a normal drinker. Like, um, I love drinking. Um, I, I liked being social. I liked, going out like I like the feeling um, but it just got to the point where I like I said like it was giving me more pain than pleasure I you know for those couple hours where you feel pretty good at night it would destroy my next day I'd be hung over yeah. I just feel like complete crap you know and it just got to the point where I was drinking more and more and I had little kids and a, a job and, you know, it just for years I was just like, OK, I'd, I'd overdo it. I want to cut back. I want to moderate like moderation was my holy grail. Like I just wanted to be normal. Um, and so I'd, I got to a point and tried many different ways to quit or moderate like I would take dry January. I would take a month off and be fine, you know. I, I never hit rock bottom um, I, because I was fully functional always. Um, I would, you know, have whole days in bed, sure, but I still yeah. had a, <laughs> I still had a job. I still took care of my kids. I didn't get in trouble with the law. Um, so for me, That's I was good then. Yeah, for me though, it was like, well, then maybe I don't have a problem, right? Because I, I'm still managing my day to day. Gotcha. Um, so I I just felt like I I'm not someone who you know inpatient rehab would be for, and I'm not someone who wanted to do AA um, because that's another just it wasn't for me. I didn't want to go be anonymous and uh, follow some of their steps. I know it's super effective for some people, but for me, I was like, no, that's not 
n- not it's for kinda, me. It's kind of depressing. You know, I, I've never been there, but like, I don't know. Because you, you know Brandon? Oh, he was telling you all about it. Yeah. Like, like he, he's gone there and then he uh, he was like, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of depressing. Right. I yeah. think he said that's the only place I've come out of wanting, wanting. a drink. <laughs> yeah, going in there. Enough. I know. And it kind of like, I don't know. I was just sad to hear that. It's like sometimes maybe they really aren't helping everyone. Exactly. Yeah. So what, and, and part of the reason I started the alcohol tipping point was because I found there are so many ways to address this. Um, you know, it, it's drinking alcohol use disorder. It's on a spectrum. So it, it can be causing mild impairment to causing severe pain um, mentally and physically to your health and your life. Yeah. Um, but there are many ways to treat it. So I, I don't like prescribe to just one way. Um, I, 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 that's why I'm like having different people on the podcast. That's why I look at different methods, you know, what, yeah. what might help someone might not help another person and vice versa. So, yeah. So what, what finally helped me actually was finding, um, the alcohol experiment, um, which was created by Annie Grace, who wrote the book, This Naked Mime, which is just kind of a paradigm shift to how we treat drinking. Because sometimes there's two philosophies like, oh, it's the person. The person is the problem. The person is the addict. Um, it's their personality. It's genetic. It's your fault. You know, it's very, very shameful. Mm-hmm. Um, but Annie Grace's way was more like, well, you know what? This this alcohol that we're drinking, is it is a poison. I mean, it is a chemical. Um, it is a carcinogen. Um, I mean, if it's it's not healthy and it's kind of been spread in media and, and probably from big alcohol companies that, oh, yeah, red wine is good for you. Well, if you really look at the data, like that's not true. And maybe one glass, okay. Yeah. But when you're having like a bottle or more at night, like that's, that's not good. Yeah, you're kidding yourself if you're drinking yeah. for health reasons. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you just are kidding yourself. Um, so yeah, so it kind of shifted the the shame and the guilt I felt like, oh, I'm a bad person. I'm a terrible person. I can't stop drinking. This is my fault to like, wow, this, this really is like an addictive substance that you build tolerance to that it, I mean, it's no good, no good for our health, but if you want to, but also (laughs) I just want to add, like, I'm not like totally anti-alcohol. I just want people to be aware of what they're putting into their body um, and make their choice because we're grown ups, we can make our own choices about if we drink or not or smoke or not. Like, right? We we but but I think we've been told a lot of things from media and just socially that it's it's okay to drink. It's not gonna cause you harm. Okay. So oh going back to how I quit. Yep, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> I tend to go off on tangents. No, I, I know I do too. I, I definitely do. Yeah, so um, like I was saying, I found the alcohol experiment, which which was just a different way of looking at your drinking. Um, and it, it was also okay if you wanted to drink. Like you weren't shamed if you did drink. They call them data points. Um, because the point of that was to to just get curious. Like, well, why do I need a drink at five o'clock every night? Or why, why do I, I feel the need to have a drink at every social setting, at every birthday party, every game, every concert? Like, what, what's going on there? So it was just kind of built around curiosity, but it was also a 30-day challenge um, where you learn more and more about alcohol and its effects on you. And then you're also practicing not drinking. And, and so I'm a big, big advocate for practice, not perfection. Um, because alcohol, and I guess this is one of the reasons that I, I don't necessarily agree with AA, is that it's day one, day two, day three. If you mess up, you go back to day one. You know, you get your yep. chip taken away, you go back, and I just, I'm like, whoa, what about all the days before? What about all, everything you learned and practiced? Like, 
I, there's just no room for that um, grace and and for being kind to yourself. And and then you inadvertently create this shame spiral if you're not perfect. And and I talked about it before on the podcast, like this this need for perfection in anything we do it is really detrimental. Yeah. Okay. So that it so that's what helped. I didn't like get there right away. Mm-hmm. It took me a lot of time to get to where I am now where I'm like, oh, I don't I have no desire to drink. Like I'm done with it. I finally am like I've broken up. I've divorced alcohol. Nice. <laughs> yeah. But we're but you know uh, I, I can be around it and not be like, Oh God, I wish I could have a drink right now. Um, so I've, I've took a long time, took a lot of, uh, groundhog days, I would say where I just practice getting better and better Mm -hmm. or like day after tomorrow, you know, with Tom Cruise, that movie, Uh uh-uh. You've never seen Day After Tomorrow? Yeah, I have not. Oh, it's good. Really? (laughs) I think you would like it. Okay. So it's basically, he's, um, takes place, I think, on another planet or our planet, but he's a soldier and they're fighting aliens. <laughs> <laughs> and every day he relives the same day again. But his whole goal oh. is to make it through the day to, like, kill this alien ship or whatnot um, to save his troops. And so every day he has to figure out because he ends up getting killed he'll go a little way and then just like get Wait, then shot. i feel like i've seen this movie and then he keeps like respawning and has to go through the day again yes yeah i've definitely seen this movie yeah okay totally and yeah. he learns and he's like oh i know i should do this i should swear yes. that i need to talk to this person i need to get this team yep well that's how it was for me with with alcohol every day you know, like some days, oh, gotcha. some like days a- I wouldn't be successful, but guess what? I'd learn from it. And then the next time I can do better. And then the next time do better. You know, yeah. alcohol was my alien. Alcohol was your alien. Mm-hmm. But you killed that alien. I killed that mother. <laughs> we killed that alien. <laughs> <laughs> I just found out we had sound effects and I asked Ryan if we could use them. That was good timing, right? What'd you think? I loved it. Okay, good. <laughs> good, okay. Next question. Oh yeah, um what's your these are one of your write ins. What's one of your top tips for quitting? Oh, I would say I have a lot of tips, but oh, okay. what comes to mind is data not drama. Um okay. and that could apply to all areas of your life. So when we, um, I, I guess kind of going back to think about yourself, your basic human self, your basic biological self, and you are putting fuel into your body. So whether that's a beer or that's a cupcake, um, you're just simply eating or drinking those calories. And that's just data. Well, we tend to assign drama or emotion to those basic facts. So so if you drink that beer and you're like, oh shit, I drank that beer. I'm, I, I said I wouldn't, oh, I'm, a, I'm a terrible person. I really can't control my drinking, oh. Um, then you've, you've assigned a whole bunch of emotion and drama to it. Um, and same with like, if you're, if you're dieting and you eat that cupcake and then and you just like, spiral, Gosh, that was so good though. That cupcake That's a was positive so way, but, <laughs> but it can be, you can assign a really negative emotion. Right. So I, I guess what's helpful is, is not to shame yourself after you do something. Right. That's huge. What you did was simply a fact. Like I did yeah. it. It's done. What can I learn from it? Right. I'm a scientist. Right. Um, so yeah, data, not drama. That was also from a, a podcast I really love, Primal Potential. I like that. Data, not drama. Mm-hmm. Okay, so um, I know this is a side gig for you, but describe the work you do for your main job. Yeah, so I am a registered nurse, and I'm also a certified health and wellness coach. And I work for our hospital here, St. Alphonse's. 
and um, we run wellness programs for clients like uh, Boise School District. Um, and so what we do is we do health screenings, um, which is where you basically get your blood pressure taken, get your height and weight, you get your labs drawn to check like, how's your cholesterol? Um, are you at risk for diabetes? Do you have high blood pressure? And so then what we do is uh, we have programs um, and health coaching like I do just to help people manage their health better. And so I really focus on the preventative and just identifying problems before they get worse, which is also why I am so into the alcohol tipping point yeah. and just having different ways to treat how alcohol use, because you don't have to hit rock bottom. You, you don't have to have a huge drinking problem, quote unquote, to have a problem with drinking. And, right. and we don't treat it usually in the medical community until you get to that point where it's causing severe harm to your health. So I, I like to identify the pre area, just like we do with pre hypertension or pre diabetes, like you, you can get in there and, and you can help somebody take care of their health, take care of their mental health. I do a lot of, um, with my health coaching, a lot of like stress management, stress reduction. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's what I do. I love, love my job. I love the people I work with. Good. Um, good. I feel like but, that's very important too in your job, loving the people you work with and loving what you do. Yeah. Then it's not really a job. It's a calling. Exactly. But this alcohol tipping point is also like a calling for me, I feel like. Right. Like it's it's important to me. Like I feel like I can take my skills as a nurse and a health coach and, and just really help people yeah. who have this specific problem um, with alcohol. Now, a uh, quick question I just actually just thought of. Yes. Um, what do you recommend or do you have any advice for like a lot of these college kids that go out and um, binge drink Thursday through sometimes Sunday? Um, I was what, one of them. And what do you what are your thoughts on that? Or do you have like any tips or advice for them? Like, do you kind of see as a nurse as well? Do you kind of see maybe some alcoholics? Like, is that how it kind of starts? You think college, the the intense partying, the drinking games? Yeah, I well, I mean, I think it can definitely start there. I grew up in a college town. I grew up at um, in Moscow. Oh, that yeah. And I went to That's University a, of Idaho. That is a drinking school. That's drinking culture, <laughs> and yep. you know, that's your tribe. And that I I was drinking. I I mean, yeah, Thursday through Sunday. Seriously, yeah, maybe even but, Wednesday through Sunday. Oh yeah, unless <laughs> unless I had a test. The next Unless day, it was midterms or something like that, right? I was drinking, and it was either once I turned twenty one, like I hit all the, you know, the, the Dutch club, yep, yep, the Dutch goose, um, yep. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it it's definitely. I think, and I have a teenage daughter now too, and I I I never tell anyone what not to do. Right, I'm kind of more like be safe educate did you know this um and and especially unfortunately for women um getting into these unsafe situations where they drink too much and end up doing things they might not want to do and and same for guys too like yeah. um so i'm i'm more like be safe take an uber walk uh you know, find other activities. If all your friends do, I mean, we want to hang out with our friends and right. if all they do is drink, then that's usually what we end up doing to fit mm -hmm. in. Right. Um, and so I, I guess I would say like, is it a problem for that person? Like, is it affecting the rest of your life? Are you starting to feel pretty shitty at yeah. your job? Are you, you know, like, because the number one step is awareness. So to anything <clears throat> like, oh, you know, maybe I am drinking a bit too much and then just get curious, like, why, you know, why, why am I drinking with my friends? You know, I really wanted to watch March Madness. <laughs> 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 now I don't even remember the game the next day or, I'm, yeah. you know, um, but yeah, that's a whole population that 
it, it's real difficult and it's real difficult to go against the grain and not drink because I'm sure like you get some crap for not drinking like a little, little up peer with pressure you? yeah yeah, yeah. So I, I would probably just advise, like, getting curious, getting aware, taking breaks. Yep. Like, hey, I'm going to just try. I'm doing an experiment. I'm going to see how I do Friday night not drinking, you know, and just pick one day. Like, I'm just going to try Friday night not drinking. See what I think. Like, mm. how is this? Yeah. Um, but it's hard. It's really hard when everyone else is doing it. For sure. Right. Like if you go downtown and everyone, literally everyone around you is getting drinks. And you're like, you know what? Yeah, I'm just going to be sober tonight. Yeah. That'd be, that'd be kind of tough. I feel like. You got to be confident. You really do. And make the decision. Like, because what was so hard for moderating for me was like, there's so many rules involved. It's like, right. well, I'm going to have one drink and then I'm going to have water in between. And then I'm only going to, you know, drink after seven o'clock and I'm going to stop drinking by nine. And then I'm like, that was really hard for me. If, if I was able to go into the night already having made the decision, like I'm not drinking tonight. Like that decision has already been made for me. Plus you save a, a lot of money. And if you're a college student and you're going out spending money at the bar, like <clears throat> yeah. maybe a reward for you would be to save whatever money you would have spent on right. a night of drinking to, mm -hmm. to get something cool or do something else for right. yourself. Yeah. But practice it's practice. It doesn't have to be perfect. Correct. Okay. Good answer. I like that. <clears throat> Last question. Ready? What do you see for the future of ATP? Yeah, ATP I see, which is alcohol tipping point. Yeah, I was going to say, for you folks tuning yeah. in, um, <laughs> that is alcohol tipping point. I see a theme song. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> you down with ATP? I'm down with ATP. Okay. Um Sorry. I, <laughs> so seriously, what I see for ATP is I, I would like to start offering coaching. Um, I would like to have some sort of program, more of a community. Um, for the podcast, I'm really looking forward to like interviewing other people in this arena. I have an author um, coming on from Australia coming up. I have um, another like sober coach, um, women's empowerment coach. Uh, so yeah, I just, my word of the year is growth. So I'm just looking to grow it and learn new things and talk to more people, meet more people and just be able to offer more help too. Mm -hmm. Okay. How about some fun random questions? Well, let's we got do some it. Time. Okay, ready? <clears throat> oh, which ones to choose? I told Ryan this is the the mullet podcast, so business in the front, party in the back. These are our party questions. Would you rather ride a bike, ride a horse, or drive a car? No, we'll skip that. To where? I don't I don't know. Bad question. Here, next what? one. <laughs> what would you sing at karaoke night if you had one song? Oh. See, yeah, okay, I like uh, this one. Bohemian Rhapsody. Really? I went, fun fact, we went to That's um, a good one. Ireland, my mm -hmm. husband and I, for our 15th wedding anniversary. And we went to this, like, little, well, we stayed with this wonderful Irish lady, um and at her house and then we went to she had like a little party there with the all her friends and irish stew and then we went to this pub she drove down like these back roads of of ireland <laughs> this was on the west coast of ireland um and we went to this pub and there had at the party there was i'm just gonna say kind of a dorky guy yeah kind of a chubby guy and he talked like a leprechaun he really did talk like a leprechaun. Really? But he, everybody in this this Irish pub was singing, and he got up, and he sang Bohemian Rhapsody, and it was beautiful. It was really? amazing. He had a voice like an angel. <laughs> I'm not 
kidding. And he sang that whole song like a cappella, and then it, we were all singing along. And then he even did like the guitar solo, like yeah. yeah. I could never sing it as good as him, but that'd be my karaoke song. Wow. And wow. I don't need a drink to do it. <laughs> there you go. Um, list two of your biggest pet peeves. Oh, um, being late. Mm, gotcha. I hate it when people are late. Gotcha. Okay. That's another one. Ooh. I might have to come back to that one. Okay. So we got one pet peeve. Um, hmm. If money was no object, what would you do all day? Any day? Travel. I would really want to travel. Answer. Yeah. Yeah. I want to explore the world, especially now after COVID. That's always, that's always such a good answer. Because you could just, you can never go wrong with traveling, right? No, experience. Like, I, I would rather, like, pay for an experience yeah. than a product. Easy. Mm-hmm. Easy. Um, if you could have one meal for the rest of your life, what would it be? It's not pizza. I'm not a fan of okay, pizza. Okay, so you just don't like pizza. <laughs> well, it's okay. I just... Does I don't know depend? why I got, like, I'm a pizza hater, but... Did you just have a bad slice? Well, what's going on? I just feel like people answer pizza for that question. Right. And I'm not going to answer pizza. Yeah. I, for me, it depends on where I'm getting the pizza. Yeah. It can't just be, like, Little Caesars. I mean, that's just... Well, no. That'd be dumb. Yeah. You can't beat their prices. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> but I just... I would probably do, like, Guido's pizza. Mm. Local. I, if I had to choose pizza. Local yeah. pizza. Oh, it's great pizza. It's great. Well, see, people can talk about pizza forever. And here we've been talking about pizza. Yeah, and then they just there's this coned pizza that just opened up. Oh, that, that doesn't sound good to me, How Ryan. How does that work? I don't know. I don't know either. It's a lot of dough. Yeah. Oh, gosh, what would I choose? I would probably choose pasta with the cream sauce, but I have to have a lot of vegetables. Pasta with cream sauce and a lot of vegetables. Any proteins? I'm going to say either chicken or shrimp. Very good answer, especially for the pasta. Okay. Okay. Hmm. What is your biggest fear? Well, lately, I have been afraid of heights more than I thought. I, I didn't think, I don't know if it's getting older and having kids, but I went on a chairlift with my daughters mm -hmm. and like, you're not, you're up so high and you're not like buckled in and they would wiggle around and it just oh, gotcha. freaked me out and just looking down or looking over a ledge, I, I can't do it anymore. But when I was younger, I could. Huh gotten worse <laughs> okay who is your hero oprah <laughs> really oprah winfrey i don't know i don't know if i have a specific hero i do love oprah i miss oprah <sighs> she is a queen yeah that is for sure is that your answer sure okay <laughs> i don't know <laughs> You typed out a question, um, what was it like, question mark? Did you, did you, did you just stop halfway Well, I, what I did was I cut and pasted a lot of, a list of random questions. Okay. That's real broad. Let's do, let's do two more questions, Ryan. Two more questions. Okay. Um... What makes you laugh the most? Probably my daughter. My 11-year-old <laughs> Alice is pretty hilarious. She probably makes me laugh the most. Okay, just like her like motor functions or does she say stuff? Oh, she stay she says stuff. Really? She's 
pretty witty. She's How old pretty is she? silly. She's 11. Oh, okay. Yeah, she's at that stage. I bet she's she's cracking you up. She's always been real yeah. silly. Good. Yeah. I bet that makes it fun. Yeah. Okay. Last one. Ready? Yes. Wait, wait. Uh, oh, I thought you had a drum roll on your sound no, effect. No, I don't have a drum roll. I have applause. I have a rim shot drum. It's like... Oh, okay. Um, the harp? Okay. Try that. Last question. Yes. I guess that'd, Ryan. F- that'd fit, right? Yeah. All right. What is your favorite game or sport to watch and play? I think you asked that because you're into sports. I saw it and I was like, I got to ask it. I'm curious. Wait, wait. What was it? To watch or play? Watch and play. Well, I am. So it's like a double question. Okay. My favorite sport to watch. Uh, I would say, well, at this age now, my kid's sport. So my older daughter plays volleyball. Okay. And she's played basketball and gymnastics. And I love Love to watch her play, um, no matter what it is. Especially these team sports now are just, like, mm-hmm. intense. So right now, it's volleyball. It's my 14-year-old daughter's volleyball. I cannot play sports. I am not <clears throat> athletically gifted, like, at all. Like, I, I really would, I mean, even cornhole, um, not talented at. <laughs> I'm sorry to disappoint you, right? No, no, it's totally fine. I walk or ride That's a, a sport. bike. That's a sport. <laughs> yeah. Team sports? No, you don't want me on your team. Like, you know, like badminton, pool. Oh well, you know what? We brought out the badminton <clears throat> uh, last spring when when quarantine hit, and I played mm-hmm. quite a bit of badminton. Okay, okay, I can do badminton. Okay. Badminton's lit. It's fun. I love it. I know. I think it's so fun. Um, and my husband <clears throat> has brought out croquet, and him and his friend croquet. play croquet. Oh, I haven't played that in a while. Oh man, they they're intense. <laughs> they they get into it with croquet. Oh, they play weekly. They play. He'll come over this weekend, and they'll play croquet in between in like March front, Madness. Or b- front or backyard? Backyard. We got it all set up. It's been set up for like a year. Well, wow. except for winter. Yeah. Huh. But I I'm I tried croquet too. Not that great. Not that great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't remember like all the rules to that. It has you have like a like a wooden hammer, right? And you have to like swing it down and hit the ball through the like the uprights of the in the yes. in the lawn. Yes. The answer is yes. That's so, all I know. Yeah, I, I don't know any. I can't. You hit a ball else. to hit a ball to hit to go through like a little uh, arch thing. Yeah, and yeah. Gotcha. I'll have to look that up. I'll have to watch a YouTube video on how to play croquet. Well, if you're looking for a new backyard game to play, it's it's pretty fun. Okay. Be the be the cool young kid yeah. among your group of friends that plays croquet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right well um that was it that was the final question for well, you thank you thank you this was fun well thank you guys for listening um i hope this just gave you a little bit of an idea about alcohol tipping point and some little fun facts that maybe you knew or didn't know about me um but please please feel free to reach out uh you can always check my website alcoholtippingpoint.com you can find me on Instagram at Alcohol Tipping Point or Facebook, and I'd love to hear from you. And if you're interested in coaching or meeting with me, drop me a line. I'd love to. Um, so have a great day. And thank you, Ryan. Always. It was a pleasure. Hey everyone, thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Alcohol Tipping Point. I'm always here for you guys, so please feel free to reach out and talk to me on Instagram at Alcohol Tipping Point and check out my website, alcoholtippingpoint.com. 
Again, I hope you can use these tips we talked about for the rest of your week. And until then, see you next time. Thank you.